Hello, welcome to BBC World News. China says it has successfully landed a robotic spacecraft on the far side of the moon. It's the first ever such attempt and landing in this uncharted territory. The Chang'e 4 spacecraft is named after the moon goddess in Chinese mythology. Beijing has been keeping the mission very quiet, as our correspondent there, John Sudworth, explains. Well, Sally, uh, very little uh, in, in, in the way of a preview, uh, almost a media blackout ahead of this landing attempt. We know the spacecraft was launched um, in early December. Uh, we knew that this, uh, this planned mission was underway, but almost everything uh, we've known about uh, the actual landing attempt and the likely window uh, morning time in China uh, today has come from uh, observers outside China looking at uh, uh, the orbit around the moon. Uh, the craft has been in this elliptical uh, orbit pattern over the last few days, uh, just uh, at its closest point, just 15 kilometres above the landing site. So it looked imminent, but nothing in Chinese media. And I think that gives you a sense of not just the science uh, it, it, the, the sort of scientific importance of, of this mission, but also uh, the, the political and propaganda importance of, of a success. Uh, and then an hour or so ago, we got the official confirmation that it had indeed uh, managed to complete this soft landing on the far side of the moon. As a side of the moon, of course, we've seen before. Uh, many uh, spacecrafts have been in Earth in, in moon orbit. We've taken photographs of, of, of that side of the moon. Uh, but no landing attempt has ever been made because of the difficult challenges in doing so. John Sudworth there. Let's speak to Fred Watson, Australia's astronomer at large, joining me now live from Sydney. I saw you nodding away there to uh, John Sudworth's uh, um, explanation of things. What, what's your take on, on the media blackout that there was? Was that because perhaps they weren't confident of success enough? I think it speaks of a, of a space agency that is in its infancy. Uh, the Chinese Space Agency, of course, relatively young when you look at uh, an organization like NASA. Uh, and if you, uh, you know, rewind time, as I can do at my advanced years, back to the early days of the space race between the Soviet Union uh, and the uh, uh, American uh, Space Agency. Uh, in those days, uh, uh, the Soviet Union was very similarly secretive about its activities in space. Uh, it, of course, has much more confidence now. Uh, and I suspect as time goes on, we'll hear more uh, of Chinese space activities in advance of, of when they happen. Yeah, it's, um, it's very different, isn't it? When you're watching uh, NASA telling us in minute detail every s single aspect of one of their missions, it is very different to watch it, isn't it? Um, just explain, though, how big a deal this is. I mean, you say it's a, a space agency in its infancy, but it's done something really massive here, hasn't it? Absolutely extraordinary. That's right. Um, putting a spacecraft down on the surface of the far side of the moon is an enormous challenge. It's one that shouldn't be underestimated. And of course, there's the immediate problem of the, the radio blackout that you get by the virtue of the fact that the moon is in the way. Um, and so the Chinese space agency has circumvented that by having uh, a spacecraft in what's called a halo orbit. It's an orbit that actually is about 20,000 kilometers beyond the moon. Uh, and puts this uh, spacecraft, whose wonderful name is Magpie Bridge, uh, comes from an ancient Chinese folk tale. tale. Uh, Magpie Bridge acts as a, a, an intermediary. So uh, that spacecraft can always see the Earth and it can always see Chang'e. And so it can relay signals between them. OK. Um, and just in terms of what we're expecting to learn from this, they're going to be bringing back samples, apparently. Tell us what we're... What, well... Is that, oh, you don't not look, this, not convinced. <laughs> That's the next one. <laughs> next one, okay. So tell us what the aim is. What is the, I mean, obviously you're going to get very excited about the images, but what is the, the big picture here? Yeah, that's right. So I've seen that some of the images that have come back. Unfortunately, um, all their captions were in Chinese characters, and I'm not the, not that good at that. Um, but I think they were taken probably on the de descent phase as the spacecraft was landing. But the, the science is the really amazing thing here. And in some ways, it makes you wonder why nobody has done this before, because we stand to learn such a lot about the origin of the moon. We know already that the moon's far side is very different from the near side. Of course, 
the, the moon always faces the same uh, direction, it always faces the Earth. And so the far side has a much thicker crust, it's got far fewer of these basalt lava flows that we see on the near side. Uh, and where they've chosen to land is in a, uh, once again, a really interesting place. It's in what's called the South Pole Aitken Basin, uh, in fact in a large crater in that basin. And that basin was probably formed not very long after the moon itself was formed. It was when something huge, uh, the size of a, a large asteroid, maybe even a small planet, clouted the moon uh, and formed this deep crater, which essentially would have excavated minerals from uh, the moon's interior. And those are the minerals that actually will be what uh, the Chang'e uh, mission is looking for okay. uh, to try and do some analysis of the surface. Yes. OK, great stuff. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much, uh, Fred Watson. Thank you. Fred Watson, Australia's astronomer at large there.